Hello everybody. Um, in this video, we are talking about one new topic, which is a really, really important topic, which is the solution of nonlinear algebraic equation or a set of nonlinear algebraic equations. Um, so we saw before in this uh, series that we can solve um, a set of uh, linear algebraic equations using matrices, and we saw how we can go through this process pretty simple um, and straightforward. And with MATLAB, it's it's very very easy to do. Um, however, the, the equations that we deal with in engineering applications are mostly nonlinear equations, like having um, um, exponential uh, len logarithmic um, uh, operations, uh, having um, trigonometric functions, having um, uh, exponential functions, um, uh, any powers that are uh, uh, not equals to one or anything to the power of the variable. There are many, many ways of the nonlinear equations that we deal with. So it's important to know how or, or to, to be able to solve these equations and to know how to solve them. Um, and um, I'm, in this video, I'm just going to go through the notes um, to see the basic uh, basics of the solution. Uh, so that when we go in the next video to go with the solution, uh, we have the same background, we are all on the same page. Um, so the first thing is that the solution uh, of nonlinear equations is, is uh, usually done by what we call the iteration uh, or the uh, iterative solution or by doing trial and error. Um, which means that I have an equation that is y um, is a function of x, like what we see here. Uh, so we start the solution by uh, assuming a value of x. So I just assume any value and then calculate y, which is the function of x, and then um, see if the solution is close to the, the, the solution that we need or, or the value that's calculated is close to the, the target value, which in this case is 0, for instance. So if y equals zero, then the, 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 the assumption is true. If it's, it's not zero, then um, it might be close. Um, but if it's not the zero, we go and then um, check that. Uh, if, 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 uh, if it's not, uh, I'll go to the tolerance now, but uh, what we mean by this, if the, the solution or the, the, the value of x does not satisfy the equation well, um, then we recalculate y by assuming another value of x and, and so on. So th the point here is how do we tell if the solution satisfies the equation or not, or the, uh, the, the value of x that we assume satisfies the equation or not. Um, so we have what we call the tolerance, and the tolerance is just a number that we uh, put um, as a, a limit by which we tell if the solution is, is right or wrong. So let's say I want the solution to be zero. Um, um, if, if you put the tolerance to be 10 to the minus three, uh, in this case, if the calculated y is 0 0.0001, uh, then the, the software will tell you that it, it has already reached the solution. Or you can, if you're solving this manually, you can tell that this is uh, satisfying for you. You have already three decimal places that are zeros. Um, so you can, and as you, as you decrease the tolerance more, as you get more accurate results. However, it takes more computational power, of course, and it, this sometimes it makes the solution uh, kind of difficult. And in, in, in some cases, if it's very, very low value, you cannot reach the, the, the solution that gives you that high level of accuracy, and then it might not be solved because of the tolerance. Uh, so it's 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 important to know that, and and this is what we just um, uh, what I just said about the tolerance. So um, you already have the notes. Uh, one important point that helps in the solution is the first value that you assume, and as you assume a value that it's close to the solution. Um, you decrease the number of iterations that you make and you can reach the solution quickly. Um, and if you are assuming a very far value, you might not uh, or might take very long time to, to get the solution and it might not solve the, solu the, the, the problem at all. It might kind of what we call the divergence. It might go to negative infinity, positive infinity or any value that does not give a solution. And this is an example that we have here um, the... the uh, uh, the solution. Uh, these are iterations showing the value of variable x. 
um, and the function fx uh, with the first three iterations. And you see here uh, the first value is assumed to be 6.75, and then the error was 0.375. And as you go more, um, you, you, you get closer to the solution that you want. Um, the uh, the uh, uh, mm, um, I, I'm just saying here that it will take you more more iterations to reach the solution, so it's it's the same thing. Um, so uh, the the qu the question that some of you might ask is uh, how do I know the initial value that is close to the solution uh, if I do not know the solution actually? So how can I know know that this is a close to a close solution to the the solution that I'm I'm seeking? Um, and this is kind of depending on your understanding of the problem. So in in this is a, a very famous example that we always give. Um, you're solving a real gas equation of state, um, and you know that. Uh, the real gas is a modification of the ideal gas because the ideal gas assumes some th some some assumptions that are not true for real gases, and you know that the ideal gas will not give a, a a correct solution, but it will give a close solution to that solution that you are seeking. So you can assume the first value as an ideal gas. It's not the true solution, but it's kind of close. It gives you kind of very vague guidance of the. Uh, of the value, and then you can use this as starting point that you can use to go to the point that you want. Um, there is one point that uh, uh, is kind of computational. I think it's it's not something that's related to the the problem itself. It it's related to the way it's solved, um, and this is how the, do you assume the next value after the first value? So let's say I assume the value it's not right, and then I will not need to go another iteration iteration to do another iteration, and to do this iteration you have to assume. Another value so how you can use, assume another value from the first value there are many many ways you can do this and there are a lot of mathematical methods like bisection method fixed point method Newton Raphson method uh, I have already discussed some of them in the uh, Microsoft Excel series and you can go to them and see um, them for more details however this is not something that you need to worry about if you are using a software because it's, it's going to take care of it. In some cases, the, 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 the problem or the equation does not converge easily. I mean, it does not reach the solution easily. And you might kind of use or, or choose the, the way that it's using um, to, uh, or the software is using to do the iterations. However, in, 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 in most of the cases, you do not need to do this. So so this is kind of an advanced point that you might need to visit if you need to. Um, so for the solution, um, it's kind of close to what we did before in Microsoft Excel. Uh, there are two tools that you can use, like Goal Seek and Solver. So have F Solve and F0. F, F Solve is kind of corresponds to the solver and the F0 corresponds to Goal Seek. Um, F0 can solve only one equation in one unknown. Um, F-Solve can solve more than one equation in one unknown. Uh, I, I personally prefer to use F-Solve um, because it's more f powerful. It can do everything that F0 can, can do. So I, I would personally prefer to use this instead of going back and forth between these two. Um, and to understand the syntax that we use for um, using the F-Solve or F0, you just need to think what inputs these the, these functions need to give you a solution. So it, you need to define the problem, which is the equation or the set of equations. You need to define the initial value that's going to use, and um, you need to... Uh, and, and, uh, and to define the tolerance. And the tolerance is already defined as um, the default value, like it was in Excel. And you can change the value later in the options, as we will see later. Um, so this is why the, the, the syntax looks like this. You, you ask it to give you the output, which is uh, using F0 to get the solution of a function, which is mainly a function handle. And you give it an initial value, and that's all. So it's pretty simple and straightforward. You don't need to like write a very complex syntax or something like that, just one line. Um, you can here do this uh, options um, line, um, and you can use this options to uh, kind of give you some, some uh, options um, that uh, might be of interest to you, like uh, to, to show you the iterations, um, to change the tolerance, to give some some out more outputs, or to uh, control the inputs. Um, so this is something that we can do. 
um, uh, and this is an, an example for uh, using if solve. It's, it's, you see it's just one line. You have here the equation and you have the initial value and you get the solution. So uh, I'm not going to go through the details now of the syntax uh, more. Uh, I'll do this in the next video. So I'll see you, see you there. Goodbye.